For days, the big question in Accra, capital of Ghana, was would the Queen's visit be cancelled? The people there, optimists by and large, seemed quite sure it would not be. But as there's been a spot of bother lately, the British government had to be satisfied that it would be safe for Her Majesty to go, especially when some damage was done, even to the statue of President Nkrumah. Hurriedly, Mr. Duncan Zan, Commonwealth Secretary, flew to Ghana to examine the security arrangements. The Ghanaian Foreign Minister received him on the President's behalf. Mr. Sands met pressmen and explained the position to them. It was, to all appearances, a pleasant meeting. The journalists appreciated the British Cabinet's anxiety in view of the recent bomb incidents, and they convinced him how tremendously disappointed everyone in Ghana would be if the Queen were advised to stay home. President Nkrumah himself was evidently quite unperturbed as he and Mr. Sands saw the now-repaired feet of the statue. They decided that together they would travel the route of the royal procession. Their decision pleased thousands in Accra, whose enthusiasm made a good impression on the Commonwealth Minister. Mr. Sands flew home, part of the way in a Canberra bomber, to report favorably to the cabinet. The decision? The tour was on. So, at London Airport, on the morning after Mr. Sands' report, the Queen and Prince Philip arrived to begin their flight. Some Ghanaians were among the people assembled to see them off. But as fog is no respecter of royal departures, there was a delay of almost an hour. Little Pearl Aqua. Mr. Eco Daniels, a law student, the Queen said she was much looking forward to the tour. To Mr. Macmillan and other ministers, the Queen bade goodbye when permission to take off was at last granted. Farewell also to the Earl of Scarborough, the Lord Chamberlain. Everyone at the airport felt that the right decision had been made and the consequences transcending all-round disappointment might have resulted had the tour been cancelled. This was the last look at England the Queen will have until she returns early in December. Not, of course, a bad time to be going, leaving winter behind. In less than seven hours, the Boeing landed 3,600 miles away at Accra. Her Majesty's subjects wish her a success. A dance with the man who replaced her as head of state of Ghana was hugely symbolic. A queen well ahead of her time. But back home, not everyone was ready to embrace the message. The first black man to dance with the queen. In a newspaper in the UK, it was withdrawn from circulation. Here in Ghana, it struck a chord. If the Queen visited here and they, it was treated like, oh, this is not quite a country, it's a second grade one, 